I, uh, I do uh, make gardens and I paint and do a little bit of writing. So I can make my rent that way. And I like to design gardens and uh, like um, custom tune gardens people's personalities and, and weave a lot of literary symbolism into the gardening so that whoever like whoever I make the garden for there's a personal story you know like if I did a, a, a garden for like Ozzy Osbourne I could collect really morbid and morbid and ugly plants which you can get around here on like black bat head plants and stuff like that. I could create a whole morbid garden for him, you know, using black and burgundy plants. And, and so what it is is sort of like, a, like adapting, fine-tuning, you know, like a literary adaption with plants, but beautiful plants to grow them healthy. Uh, I'm kind of like a medieval painter. They're spiritual paintings, they're de devoted paintings, but um, they're in a modern setting of, you know, metal and glass. But the imagery is really primal and, and, and ruthless and hairy, and it's it's like a old wall paintings in in, in like a ruined temple, mm -hmm. and so it kind of comes from a, everything seems to be in place. People are making their plans, but there's kind of a ruthless ruthless energy, and, and so moving through this this composed fabric here, mm -hmm. so. Um, I'm painting an invisible war, kind of, as I see it, or feel it, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's why I paint for resolution, just to empty myself out and clean myself out mm -hmm. to the point where I can stand, um, you know, erect and, and look at life uh, in the eye. Mm -hmm. but it's, it, um, so it's a combination of devotion and, and, and really a kind of exorcism where I'm drawing some destructive uh, demon and throwing it into the paper. So to resolve it, you know, whether it's inside me or in the world, I don't know for sure, but that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And but I'm trying to keep an old line going with like from the masters from the past and from from people who painted in uh, sacred places and like temples from old culture, like South American Ma Mayan uh, bas reliefs where they carved into stone, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of carved. And it's kind of like a spirit flitting from culture to culture, but um, and that the colors change a bit. It can look Asian one day and then look South American the other. Mm -hmm. But um, it's more like a visiting spirit over different cultures, you know. Okay. And and so it's rooted in Judaism, and Christianity, but it's touching these places intimately as I can see it. Oh my God! I watched the man fall from outer space. Get out of my mind! Get out of my mind! Did you see that one? Uh -uh. David Bowie going, Get out of my head! Go away! <laughs> <laughs> so funny, with big English buck teeth, you know, like bad English. Sorry. I notice a lot of religious implications in yeah. the paintings. Could you explain all yeah, that? Yeah, I think it's there. It's religious painting. It's it's from a Renaissance tradition of religious and devotional painting, and I think like. What I'm trying to do is, if I, I really can't open my mouth as a Christian unless I display um, a, an immense inner vitality. If I don't have inner vitality, or if it's not coming out powerfully, then it's fraudulent, you know. And and I think it's very bankrupt times for for um, you, know, you know like p people trying to gather together and they don't really discuss Christ intimately. So I figure um, it's, it's fraudulent if, if I don't produce a powerful outflow, and that outflow is the ev all that I need to display, you know? Like, it's like, um, it's like salty instead of bland food, you know? So all I can do is display the inner, inner vitality, and, and so I can bypass the, like the language of mor morality, you know. So that's what I'm doing is I'm, I'm cleaning myself out, like physically doing that creatively. And I don't study, like invite people over to paint them nude and all that shit, you know. But because um, I'm trying to pull out a story. So each of those those canvases, you know, are a story, you know. And there's like you know six six to eight hundred pieces there each one with a pretty complex story. But yeah, it is, and I think we're kind of 
I, I do look at that as kind of a dark age where a lot of creative um, pursuits have gotten really muddy and wet, wobbly like jello. And, and so it's like jello religion as opposed to a, a powerful outflow. You know? that's, that's what I feel I need to express. You know? So it's stories you know, pretty much from the intensity of the writ of uh, the, like if when you read the Bible it creates controversy for anyone whether you believe it or not, it's, it creates gut level, pri primal uh, emotions. So that's what I'm trying to do. And, um, and it, to me, like I said, everything looks in place out there and people are making their plans and it's complex and there's metal and glass out there and new buildings. But to me there's a real savage um, medieval creature roaming about. And that's what I'm I'm either doing two things. I'm tracking down that demon and throwing it into a canvas. And once that's done enough, um, then I can get to a more positive expression, you know, something beautiful. So it's more like evidence of something going on inside. And so, and I don't want to whitewash it, you know, but I do dress the paintings kind of gracefully so that people can handle them. So I think we need more intensity. I don't see intensity and depth as an enemy, you know. So I think it should be as deep as possible. Where do you store your paintings? Oh, well, they're all in the closet there, and it's a sh it's a mess, and so <laughs> and uh, so that's what I'm doing. I'm 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 kind of cleaning myself out, and those confrontations are really serious to me because my mind produces a lot of fears, and and so I'm I'm kind of like a social. I wander around socially, and then. Um, uh, I, I try to breathe life in, into my immediate surroundings. So I'll go to a coffee shop with the same intensity or intent as I do as I live at home, you know. But if I keep this a, a, a private act, then I'm not a stepping on other people to do it. You know? But anyway, that's kind of what the scenario is. It's it's sort of working from an old tradition. You mentioned intimacy a couple of times. Yeah. How does that play well, into Well, you know, that? everybody's afraid of getting trespassed on or violated or don't go there and all that shit. But if you, sh if the essence of communication is to take a tiny risk, you reveal a little bit about your life. And then when you walk away from someone, you both feel like, you know, you have evidence that other people exist. I think there's like, it's kind of very much of a phantom type of community. If, if you don't ever sit down and have a cup of coffee or share a little informally like if you're at a coffee shop with somebody else sometimes you know that generous overflow then it really sucks because it's like a big war you know and and I'm understanding it I mean it's like it's like uh, you know uh, I, I did a painting of like you know what what does it mean to throw pearls to swine you know I go I don't even know who the swine are you know is that an act of judgment to say you know pick the swine but I have to draw it on paper, you know, to like legitimize that app, that I shared something cool with somebody and then they took it and then, you know, <laughs> stepped on it like a cracked egg, you know, sh stomping it. You know. Like, don't throw your pearls to swine lest they turn and rend you. That lest they turn and rend you means when a pig with a boar with tusks dives into the gut of a person to kill them, you know, it's like wiggling, wiggling its tusks around in someone's belly. And a lot of my friends feel that way when they, they're just trying to go get a paper or a cup of coffee for God's sake, not, not have to be butchered on the way to the grocery store from a lot of this unkindness, you know, from, from superficial, that there's a big price to pay for, for superficial uh, living, you know. So I think America is a, a big, it's a big battlefield. But anyway, the, and so I p even pick my clothes for the day, like what am I going to do? What exploit am I going to do? Am I in you know, what, what am I going to fight against? So, I mean. Could, could you give me an example of that? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can tell you a quick story about some of the clothes. Clothes are over there. Okay. Well, I can show you some of my jackets. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> This is more like um, well-intentioned street pimp. This one is so I, I can blend. And then this one I had in Rome when I, I wandered around Rome. 
um, dealing with those, uh, like, was like being in Dante's Inferno. I can't, went through, all through Europe on, on a very bad year with that one. And my genes were like, my dad described them as fireproof. I thought I had actually been through an inferno over there <laughs> in Rome. And then this is uh, the plastic club shirt you don't want to throw away. <laughs> But they are diplomatic. Like when I go out into a nice cafe, I'll wear something like this because it's um, kind of French looking. And then this is more like, I don't know. Show me the red one. It's, it's a Moomoo smoking jacket. So it, it, it just, some of these look like they're from Islamic, like this one here. Or, you know, or from Asian. So I, I switch like nationalities every time I go out. I should have flowers here next to it, so, oh. so I can you know, work with the flowers. Oh, he is <laughs> Okay, well, because the thing is, is I'm just a second point. Um, the, the point being is, okay, um, well, this is more like a meditation on the, the roots of, of Judaism and the, the, the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Working down from here, there's like this woman figure crouched and she's supported by this kind of like dinosaur bird which represents the serpent in deception and you can see his tongue is like a dinosaur tongue a bird tongue and off of it sprouts the the fruit of knowledge and so she's poised up here and she's pretty clever because she has a scroll in her hand which means she has kind of like a uh, a wise perspective herself, a craftiness of a woman. Um, but here's the serpent, and he looks benign and kind of friendly, but he's full of deception. So he's kind of like an ostrich almost. And, and he is balancing on this egg right here, which represents the, the, the um, Jewish, the roots of Christianity, which is the egg. So um, I'm I'm not Jewish, but I believe there's no really no differentiation between that and Christianity ultimately. So here's the egg, and it's cracking open, representing the birth of like God's people. So, but he's perching on it like he owns it. He doesn't own it. That's not his egg, but it's breaking. And then she is kind of forward looking because her her spine is right here, and you can see um, it's smoldering from the damage that her that her people will have, or her seed, you know, her children. So she's poised this way. And then this, this is all walnut ink, which I guess the Jewish people used to gather walnuts, so I, it's good symbolism of the ink. But that's kind of what it is. And um, so it's an intensified version of the, um, the, the eating of the fruit.